All right, technology, math, science, often thought of as, I guess, unglamorous specialties for the scholarly students a few years back. But it's interesting to note today that people who are strongest in these fields become industry leaders with global reach. Teaming up with us today as part of our Parent Teacher Corner, we have Chris Toy, educational consultant of the National Middle School Association, and Brenda Wellburn, executive director of the National Association of State Boards of Education, to discuss the importance of keeping up with the rapid pace of technology as well as the core curriculums otherwise known as STEM. Good morning to you both. Thanks for being with us this morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. All right, technology is just growing and changing. I can hardly keep up. There's so many, you know, new computer systems, apps, all kinds of things out there. And I have to tell you, although my kids do know more about it than I do, it changes so much. How can we help our kids continue to, to keep up with everything? Chris, let me start with you on that one. Sure. Well, I think it's really important to do so because as has been said, maybe you've heard this, is that the world is flat. The idea being that um, our students, our children are going to be competing, if they're not already competing with students from around the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's really important that we're able to um, have our students have the same opportunities to uh, get jobs, to have careers um, in those areas. You know, here's the thing I think that's interesting about all of this is because the changes are, are so rapid in the school systems as well, how do we make sure not only that our kids are keeping up, but that they're adapting to this 21st century technology? The, the adaption, the, the adaptation piece is really important and we now have teachers coming into the profession who are digital natives just like younger, the students right? because the they're teachers younger, are younger right. they know it, they live it every day, they walk around with an iPad and their cell phones and all of the other technology. The important thing for us in schools though is to remember that we're preparing kids for jobs that don't even exist yet and technology will be at the core of that and to have them comfortable with the use of technology and the ability to change and to adapt is going to be very important to them. You know, it is interesting you say that because I have to tell you, if I'm being honest, that math, science were not my best subjects in school because what I often thought was, when the heck am I going to use this? You know what I mean? Although I love to read and I knew that's where I wanted to take my, my profession, the other subjects, math and science, were not that, you know, important to me. But at the end of the day, kids do need to know this because the world has changed, has it not? Absolutely. And I think that the instruction has changed and probably needs to continue to change. I think uh, back when I was in school, the, the teachers of math and science, they, they were more theoretical and they weren't as prepared to answer the questions, well, how am I going to use this? What does it mean for my life? And so the quick answer is that STEM science technology that needs to be engaging. Mm. We have to make it applicable to what the students are actually experiencing in their and lives. And so how do instructors do that? How do they make it more engaging? Does engaging mean fun? Does engaging mean, I mean, what, what does it mean? Well, I think um, certainly fun is in there, but I, I think of engaging as making sure that we don't confuse it with fun. It's engaging is, it can be hard fun, meaning that the time flies by because you're engaged in problem solving or trying to um, you know deal with with a problem set or something like that you know I'm smiling because you said hard fun and Brenda I saw the look on your face <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm one who always thinks schools can be fun okay. and should be fun, but also to also help kids understand that no matter where your interests lie, they can use math and science because if you want to be a dancer, you have to know the count and the rhythm and mm. music. So it comes into every facet of our lives. It's about relevancy and helping kids understand that no matter what it is they aspire to do, math is going to be a part of that. But what kinds of resources can we use to keep that momentum going? Well, I think that um, having the technology available so that it's um, not just for a few. Ah. Um, in a sense, we say that the, trans that, that the technology is transparent. Um, as transparent as paper and pencil, we take all that for granted. Mm -hmm. It's not about the technology. It's about learning 
using the technology. Learning, use, would you agree with that? I would absolutely agree with that and I would also say that more and more schools are becoming community learning centers so it's not just about what happens during the school day for students it's about how that building and those resources are used in a community so that the parent has access and can become comfortable with the with the technology at the same time their children are becoming comfortable. Okay mom's got her work cut out for her. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us this morning and really showing what really is good and very useful information. Thank you. Thank All you for right, having Chris us. Chris and Brenda. And for more information and resources on technology, math, and science, and how we can help our kids stay current and competitive, visit the National Middle School Association at nmsa.org and the National Association of State Boards of Education at nasbe.org. And make sure you keep watching our Parent Teacher Series for even more useful information.